Hi guys, I just need to do a follow up to a video I put out the other day talking about my disgust for the Black Lives Matter movement and the fact that we as a people uh, just cannot support such a group. I've gotten, you know, a couple of responses and I've gotten people that send, have sent me videos of, you know, Blake, James Blake, who was tackled by cops and two black kids who were handcuffed in New York City. And don't take it, people, that I'm saying to you that I don't understand that these situations exist. That, but all of that is cause and effect. And let me explain what it is I mean by cause and effect. Those things don't happen and are not happening to us just by random. It's happening for a reason. In the 1970s, there was a song that came out by the Staple Singers, 1972, called Respect Yourself. And this is the problem that we're facing as a people. It's a matter of self-respect. Because if we don't respect ourselves, that is where the problem begins. That's why other people, other cultures do not respect us. The, for, for instance, we're the only culture who uses, as far as I know, if there is a other culture, then somebody can you know, inform me of that, that uses the most derogatory term in order to express what's supposedly affection towards ourselves. What do I mean? We're the only culture that calls each other niggas. Can you imagine that? A term that is probably the most vile term that has ever been used to describe a people. We use that to describe ourselves. Do you see any Jews calling each other kikes? Or any Italians calling each other dagos? Or any Chinese calling each other chinks? Or you see white people calling each other crackers? No, but we do that. And we, we or, or people in our culture do it. Nobody calls me a nigga. Because if they do, I don't, not only do I not respond, I tell them right away to, to correct themselves because don't refer to me as that. So we call ourselves that. We don't respect ourselves, but we want everybody else to respect us. The staple singer says, if you don't respect yourself, ain't nobody going to give a good cahoot. And that's my point. Let me finish my point as we got interrupted. When we as a people begin to respect ourselves, then... Other people will respect us. You don't see if you you don't see uh, any pictures of of uh, Jews being handcuffed or Italians being handcuffed. Now those things. When I say that, the, people get arrested in all areas, but in all and in all communities they get arrested. But again, traditionally, what's happening is that we as a people do not respect ourselves, and that's why the Staple Singers at that time in 1972 put out the song. Because it was reflective of a time when we were, were getting abused the same way we're getting abused now. And now it's become full circle. You think you're going to get respect when our young men are walking around with their pants hanging down behind their behinds? You're not going to get respect that way. You think that we're going to get respect when in our own neighborhoods, again, do not sleep on that. When in our own neighborhoods, we're not safe. You think you're going to get respect that way? Do you think that you're going to get respect when we don't talk to each other and we don't address each other without using the word niggas. I used to be in the music business. Matter of fact, I still do music somewhat. But I used to be in the music business and hip hop has glorified the word niggas. Some of our biggest stars have gotten become multimillionaires from using those words. As a matter of fact, there's a big record out now out of Compton. I was in the record business and I'm surprised they didn't call the record niggas. Because if they could have gotten away with that, they would have. And I know somebody who's very high up in the record business who worked on that record, who's working on that record right now. Very good friend of mine. The, the, the record company would have called it that, but they couldn't get away with that in this day and age. So they call it Compton, right? But if they could have, they would have called it that. And here it is, hip hop, many of you may or may not know, is more widely listened to to white kids than black kids. Over the years of hip hop, white kids listen to it more than black kids. Many of those white kids became law enforcement officers. And so what do you expect? You expect now that they're going to respect you after they've been hearing you call yourself a nigger for the last 15 years, 40 years. Hip hop has been around. 40th anniversary. They've been listening to that for 40 years. And now you want to be respected. That's why the Staples Singers in 1972 said respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself, 
ain't nobody going to give a good cahoot. So now you black lives want to come out and say uh, black lives matter. Well, it has to matter with you first. So what do you expect? Again, if we don't respect ourselves, why should anybody else care? Why should it happen that in our neighborhoods are not the safest neighborhoods around? Why do I have to fear another black man? When people see that, when people see that we, we don't respect ourselves or that we prey on each other, what do you expect them to do? You expect them not to prey on us? You expect them not to, to, to look at, at, at James Blake and just see, well, there's a call out for a black man. They see a black man. He shouldn't have been treated like that. Those kids shouldn't have been treated like that, but you never see it happen in different neighborhoods. You'll never see it happen in different neighborhoods because they respect themselves. When we moved to Bedford-Stuyvesant, I was a little kid. And you know what Bedford-Stuyvesant was when we moved there? It was a Jewish neighborhood. Not, many of you are not going to like what I'm about to say. It was a Jewish neighborhood. As a matter of fact, there were rabbits all around. There were sunflowers in all the backyards. And then slowly, I don't know if we were the first blacks to move into the neighborhood or not. Because I was really too small to remember. But I remember the rabbits and I remember the sunflowers. And soon all of that disappeared. And Bedford Stuyvesant became one of the most notorious neighborhoods in the city. Why? It was all black. Well, so all of us are in our own neighborhoods. And our neighborhood should have been the safest, most uh, comfortable place for all of us to commune as a neighborhood. Not only live together, but commune without us fearing that we were going to get attacked by each other. And those things carried over to other communities and to other people looking at us. So when they look at us, and so they're in law enforcement, again, many of those kids haven't grown up on hip-hop. They hear us calling each other and, and disrespecting ourselves, and so then you have, you have what you have. You don't see it happening in, in Chinese communities, Jewish communities. They, they, they commit crimes there as well, but very rarely are they committing crimes amongst themselves. Now, I know some people could, could debate that because in some cultures, they have people who are going to prey on their own people no matter what. But we're talking about what you predominantly see. You're not going to get any respect when you're upset about an issue and you burn down your own neighborhood. The stores that you have to go to, you burn them down. I was in Bedford-Stuyvesant when those riots happened. And some of those stores haven't been rebuilt until now. Until, and you know what happened, how they're being rebuilt? Because other cultures are coming in and rebuilding the neighborhood. Those no, uh, neighborhoods stay desolate for years. East New York, Brownsville, all parts of Brooklyn. Stay desolate for years because we tore our own neighborhoods down. We tore it up. And then we want people to respect us. So I'm going I'm to I'm cut this short and say don't think that, that what's happening with our kids being handcuffed and James Blake, which was wrong. James Blake shouldn't have been attacked like that. If, even if they didn't know him, they could have come at him a different way. But those things happen and they're going to continue to happen when we as a people do not respect ourselves. That is where it begins, in our own neighborhoods. Our own neighborhoods should be the safest neighborhoods around. Our own neighborhoods, we should be able to, should be the safest, the cleanest. The best. That's where people want to come to live because, man, those black folks, they sure know how to keep a neighborhood. But no, traditionally what's happening is that nobody, not only did they want us to move into the neighborhood, but they didn't want to move into our neighborhoods. Why? Because it was high crime. High, high crime amongst our own people. And, 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 don't, and don't talk about, we, you know, we poor and we this and that. That's why crime. That's no excuse for lawlessness. All right, so if, the, if you guys don't like it, what I'm saying, I'm sorry you don't like it. But just the fact of the matter is, is that we as a people have to respect ourselves and then other cultures will respect us. And the police officers and law enforcement officials will approach us differently because we've changed the, the culture. We've changed the narrative so that we respect ourselves and we police ourselves. When I say police ourselves, we're able to, if something happens in our neighborhood, we're able to say, yeah, that person did it, that person did it, that person. I'm, I'm going to close with this. And that's another big thing. We've got this code of silence in our neighborhood, which doesn't allow our neighborhoods to expand beyond where they are in many instances. When I was there, I was living in Brooklyn. I went to live in Brooklyn for, for several months. When I, when I left uh, and went to Texas, I came back. I was in my apartment. I hear something going on out the window, and I see a black kid shoot another black kid. Shot him. The guy was begging for his life. Shot him. And I went downstairs to try to help the kid. And nobody would say anything to the cops. I said, I'll tell you exactly what happened and who did it. Right? Because the, 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 this kid was begging. You know why he got shot? 
He got shot because he was on the wrong side of Atlantic Avenue. For stupidness. Two lives and two families ruined for nonsense. He was on the wrong side of Atlantic Avenue. Kids shot him. Guy was on his knees begging for his life. So when you're sending me things about, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, our people uh, seem to be getting and they are getting mistreated, there's a cause for it. It's not just happening out of the blue. For, correct the cause, black people, and then we will see that people will respect us. As soon as we start respecting ourselves, as soon as we start making our neighborhoods the safest neighborhoods, as soon as we make our culture a culture where we can depend on each other, just like the other cultures do. Other cultures come over here and they depend on each other and, they, uh, and things happen in their culture as well. But understand the point that I'm making. I'm not ignorant to the fact that people, that we are being abused as a people. But there's a cause to it and there's an effect to it. Treat the cause and the effect will go away. Now you might think that that's naive of me, but that's the way I'm looking at it. right? Treat the cause. Respect ourselves. Work together as a people. Stop calling each other niggas. And you'll see that people of the other cultures will respect us around the world. This is Peter and I'm out.